So we started this series last week that we're simply calling Moving Forward. And we're getting to the end of a school year. Some of you are getting to the end of your high school career. Some of you are getting to the end of your middle school career. Uh, some of you are just moving on to a new grade. But we are all moving forward. We're all moving into a next phase of life. And as we go through this final series here at Worship Uncoiled, uh, I, I really wanted to just hit on some things that as you walk out of these doors, whether that's for the summer or off to high school or off to college or just on to a new grade and a new phase of life, uh, I wanted to go over some things that as you leave this place, uh, these are the things that I think are most important for you to remember. These are the things that if you could walk out and uh, have these things be a part of your life and just sink in to your soul deeply, uh, that, would be, that would be huge. And so last week, we simply looked at this idea that you are loved, that you are loved beyond more than you could ever imagine. Uh, you were created and God took his time and he fashioned you and, and you are just absolutely, incredibly loved. And if we can get that first and we can allow that to sink into our hearts and our minds, uh, it, it impacts everything that we do outside of that. Are you guys paying attention back there? Because you know that you are loved. And so tonight, uh, we're going we're gonna to look at another, another thing that as you walk out of these doors, uh, I, I desperately want you to remember, and it's this, you have a purpose we're jumping back into the, the book of Ephesians tonight, and we're jumping back in. Uh, tonight, we're looking at Ephesians chapter 2. And if you remember uh, from last week, Ephesians is kind of Paul's letter to say, hey, if you're going to remember anything about what I taught you, remember these things. He's written this from a jail cell in Rome. He's not sure he's going to get out. The church in the town of Ephesus uh, was strong and going great. And Paul just wanted to send them a letter to re remind them of say, some things that he thought were super, super important and super valuable. And so we were in Ephesians last week. We looked at the fact that you are loved. We're back in Ephesians this week. And, and in Ephesians chapter 2, Paul is reminding his readers that God has saved them. Paul is reminding his readers that, that they were valuable enough for God to come and to die on a cross and to be saved. That, that even in the midst of wherever they stood in life, God looked at them and said, I think you are important enough and valuable enough that I am coming to save you. And then in Ephesians chapter 2, after he has talked about them being saved and God coming and saving them, he says this. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That we are his workmanship. This verse says a whole lot about who we are. Uh, first of all, it starts out, we are his workmanship. Some, some translations say we are his masterpiece. Uh, God took his time with you. He formed you. He fashioned you. He created you. And, and he created the, the quirks and the personalities and, and the parts of you um, that, that only you know about. And the things that you think are funny and the things that you're passionate about and the things that you love. God created you. We're not just random and we are not just a cookie cutter version of a human. God created us. But the cool thing is, he didn't just create us and, and take his time and make us and form us and, and then just set us aside and forget about us. No, it, it says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, but we were created for good works. We were created for good works. God created us because we have a purpose. We have a purpose. If you follow... Paul's line of thought through chapter 2, which we're not going to read all of chapter 2 tonight, but it's this incredible line of thought that goes right along with some of the most important things that, that I want you guys to remember as you leave Worship Uncoiled, and it's this. Paul in chapter 2 says, you are loved. You are valuable enough for God to come and save you. You are so loved. It is 
beyond anything that you could ever imagine. You are so loved and God took his time and he created you and you are valuable and you have a purpose. You are loved and you have a purpose. Hear me. You have a purpose. You were placed on this earth right here, right now, in 2023, at the age that you're at, with the friends that you have, with the circle of influence that is around you for a purpose. Right now, you are serving a purpose. And here's the cool thing. When our purpose becomes clear, everything changes. When our purpose becomes clear, everything changes. Emmett, you listening? When our, when our purpose becomes clear, it impacts everything that we do. I brought with me today uh, this coat rack. I don't remember where we got this coat rack. Uh, it's a little bit dirty. Um, but I know that we got it at some point, and I think we got it to hang up by our back door to hang coats on. And I never got it done. I never got it hung up. And so it sat around our house uh, for a long time and just waiting to be used. And, um, and then one day we realized this coat rack serves a purpose that is so much more valuable to us than being a coat rack. This coat rack's purpose is not to be a coat rack. Now, don't get me wrong. There is nothing wrong with coat racks that have purposes of being coat racks. That's all well and good. That's their purpose. It's just that this coat rack does not have the purpose of holding coats. This coat rack, its purpose is planting garlic. Let me explain. We love growing garlic at our house. I have a few pictures here. So in November, we go out and we plant somewhere around six to 700 bol cloves of, gol of garlic. We go out and, and it used to be that we would go out and uh, we would go in the ground and we would take our fingers and we would dig a little hole and push a clove of garlic in that little hole. And then we would go on and do that over and over and over. And we would do that 700 times. But then we realized we had this coat rack. And what we realized was, is that if we put this coat rack upside down and we step on it, then when we pull it up, it creates four perfectly spaced holes that we can now put garlic in. And this changed everything for us in growing garlic. It made things way faster because we were able to dig four holes in the time that it took us to dig one. And it made our rows a whole lot straighter and a whole lot cleaner when they started to come up in the spring, made it a whole lot easier to take care of. This coat rack serves a huge purpose in our family. Super, super valuable to us. You guys, here, here's the reason that, that I brought uh, this, this coat rack with me tonight. Um, God looks at you and he says, you have a purpose. Now, what a lot of us think of when we think about our purpose is we think of what the world says our purpose is. We think of maybe what other people tell us our purpose is. Uh, we think we are supposed to live a life that looks like other people's purposes, perhaps. But God says, no, I've created a purpose for you. I've created a purpose for you. Yes, you may look like every other human that walks this earth, just like this coat rack looks like a coat rack. But the truth is, God says, you are my handiwork. You are my workmanship. You are my masterpiece. And I created you not to look like anybody else in this entire world, not to have a purpose that anybody else in this entire world can serve. I created you to serve your own purpose. I created you for your purpose. You have a purpose 
right here, right now. And, and God looks at you and he says, your purpose is vital. You are so, so, so important to me. When I brought this coat rack, I told Kirsten I was going to bring this with me. And she looked at me and she was dead serious. She got real serious. And she said, don't let anything happen to that coat rack. Because that's important. And I'm convinced that when God looks down and he looks at you, he speaks to the angels around him and he says, see that person right there? They're so important. They're so important to me. They serve such a valuable, huge, incredible purpose. And so the question becomes, the question becomes, how do we find our purpose? I think a lot of us, like, like I said earlier, we feel like when we're searching for our purpose, we have to look like somebody else. We have to, to serve a purpose that everybody else tells us we have to serve. And, and so we begin taking our life and instead of finding the things that God created individualistically about us and honing in on those things to find our purpose, we end up going and trying to look like other people. But God never created us to have the, uh, the same purpose as the people around us. He created us with our own unique influences, with our own unique friendships, with our, with our, own, unique, um, with our own unique circle of influence, our own interests for our own purpose. And so the question becomes, how do you find your purpose? Now, now hear me clearly. There is nothing wrong with you going out and having a purpose that is similar to someone else's. This coat rack would be absolutely fine serving a purpose as a coat rack. It's just, that's not what this coat rack's purpose is. You might go out and as you start to hone in on your, your gifts, your talents, your abilities, the things that you're good at, you might find that your purpose is similar to other people's. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. What is wrong is that if this coat rack were to say, I'm not a garlic planter, I'm a coat rack and I'm going to hang coats. Because the purpose of this coat rack is not to hang coats. And maybe for you, your purpose doesn't look like what you thought your purpose looked like. Maybe for you, your purpose is totally different than what other people say your purpose should be. And so we have to really dig in and ask the question and figure out, how do I find my purpose? What is my purpose? And, and he gives a hint to us in Ephesians chapter 2 in this verse we read earlier, if we can go back to that. It says, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Our purpose can be found in the fact that we are God's workmanship. Our purpose can be found in who we are. And so we have to begin asking ourselves some questions. How do we find our, our purpose right here, right now? You begin to ask yourself some really honest questions, and here they are. If you want to find your purpose, ask these questions. One. What are the things you're talented at? What are the things that you are naturally gifted at? Two, what are you passionate about? What is it that, man, it just really gets you fired up, that you get really, really excited about, that you could talk about for hours? Three, what do you enjoy doing? Here's what I love about asking these questions to find your purpose. You guys are in middle school and high school right now. And a lot of times when we look at purpose, we think, someday I will have a purpose of... But the truth is, God has a purpose for you right here, right now. When you begin to ask these questions as a middle school and a high school student, you can say, all right, I'm good at this. I'm passionate about this. I enjoy doing this. And you can begin to hone those skills and you can say, oh, oh man, I'm surrounded by other people that also enjoy these things, that like these things. And you can begin to do what you love and love other people in the midst of doing what you love. 
and what you're passionate about. And you can serve a purpose answering these three questions. As a middle school and a high school student, you can serve a purpose and impact other middle school and high school students. And when you become an adult, when you become a college student, you continue to come back to these questions. And your purposes may change. As a, as a middle school and a high school student, uh, I was really into friendships. I was really into, uh, I, I had a goal as I walked down the high school uh, hallway that I was in, that I was going to try to say hi to as many people as I possibly could by name. And so I would walk down the hall and my friends would always laugh at me because they'd be standing next to me and be like, hey Jim, hey Jeff, hey, hey. Hey, and, and like, I just felt like that was my purpose at that time. Just, just make people feel welcome as often as possible just by saying their name and saying hi to them. As an adult, my purpose has changed. I, I still make people feel welcome. I still make them feel important. I still like to say hi using people's names. But if I were to be honest with you about what my, my purpose is right now, it's to be the best husband and father that I could possibly be. And the beauty about these three questions is, is we can begin to serve a purpose where we are right now, and then we can begin to say, all right, I am God's masterpiece's workmanship, and he's working on me, and I'm not in the same place here that I was back there, and I'm still serving a purpose. And five years from now, I'm going to be over here, and I'm still serving a purpose. And it may not look like anybody else. It may not look like anybody else's purpose, but I am serving the purpose that God has for me. You guys, God has a purpose for you. Right now. I, I look out at this group of students and I see you guys involved in so many areas. I see so many interests. I see so much creativity. I see so much talent. And in the midst of all these interests and areas of talent and expertise, I see people that look to you And look at how you're living your life. And I am convinced that in the midst of your talents and your passions and the things you enjoy, you are serving a purpose for God. You are loving people into his kingdom. You are helping people that are struggling. You are guiding people along in their lives and they are looking to you because you serve a purpose. And God, I love that, that Ephesians says this, God has already prepared in advance for you to serve that purpose. He's already laid it out. He created you with everything that you need to go and serve the purpose that he has for you. For some of you, that's going to be sports. Your purpose is to go out and be the best that you can be in your area of athletics. That you go out and because you are so good at what you do, there are younger people and people that are the same age as you that look to you and you're serving a purpose. For some of you, it's creativity, and you can, you can craft, and you can create art, and you can create music, and, and it's this beautiful masterpiece that comes together, and, and you are so good at what you do that there are others that are creative or aspiring artists that are looking to you. For some of you, it's video games, and you are really, really good, and, and you play with other people online. And those people are looking 
to you, not only in the video games, but they see how you respond when, when good things happen, when bad things happen, and, and they see how you live your life. There are a million different areas that could be your purpose. Don't get stuck thinking you're supposed to be a coat rack when God created you to be a garlic planter. God created you with an individual purpose. And so as you walk out these rooms, my hope would be that you feel loved and you go out and you live your purpose. So I've got a practical challenge this week, and here it is. Um, this week, I just want you to ask yourself some of these questions. Begin to, to really dig in and see, hey, what is my purpose? Maybe it's gardening. Maybe it is being the best possible garlic planter you could be. Or growing out chickens. That's something our family does. Begin to ask yourself these questions. What am I talented at? What am I passionate about? And what do I enjoy doing? And begin to really hone in on the purpose that God has created for you right here, right now. Let me pray for you guys. God, thank you so much for tonight and uh, this group of students.